<laughs> hey, this is Nathaniel. And this is Ryan. We believe education and acknowledgement are crucial to conservation. This podcast is one of the ways we're contributing. There are interesting animals all around us. Let's talk about one. Happy Cinco de Mayo, everyone. It's early, but you know, it's the thought that counts, I reckon. <clears throat> Anywho, this week we're talking about the Gila Monster, and I think it'll be quite the treat for this episode. The little guys are fascinating. I'm actually really excited for this one. Me too. Yeah. I might sound a little rough, but it's okay. It's all right. Making me too salivated. <laughs> <laughs> So, as always with these episodes, I try to begin with our critter's taxonomic history. Nomic? Is it nomic or nomic? It's however you want to say it. Whatever. It's so, either or either. <laughs> someone will correct me. Probably. Unfortunately, there isn't any misidentification or changing of genus or species for this guy. <clears throat> However, the Gila monster's genus, Heloderma, is pretty interesting. Especially when you consider there's another species of lizard within the genus named Heloderma. So its scientific name is Heloderma Heloderma, which means studded skin, studded skin. <laughs> That's funny. So why the Gila monster is... There, why, ugh, there was more to that sentence and I didn't say it. So the Gila monster's uh, <clears throat> scientific name is Heloderma suspectum. I do. <laughs> well, anywho, this monster, I'm using air quotes here, <laughs> has one of the worst reputations out of any lizard in the U.S. With so many wives' tales about them spitting venom, leaping up to three feet in the air to attack its chosen victim, and all that wild stuff that we hear about them, one would think that the Gila monster is incredibly deadly, or at least does something cool. No. There are no reported deaths since the 1920s, and even back then, there's not many. It's just mainly people who got bit out in the middle of nowhere, and the venom took them before they died anyway. I wonder if it was the venom that took them, or the infection. Uh, give or, it's about 50-50. Well, from, from what I read, the venom's not really deadly to humans, so I would think it would be more the infection that got them than, I mean, they would say... Yeah. The venom killed them, but it was probably an infection. Probably. Or they were so weak already because they were out in the heat that the drop in blood pressure and all of that just took them out. <clears throat> anyway, so... Uh, all, basically, all it does is it when they bite you, it makes you sick, your blood pressure drops, and where the bite is, it leaves you with a tingling, burning sensation. But there's nothing, it's nothing that modern medicine can't handle here. Oh, hey, speaking of modern medicine. Yeah. You need to take some, you sound rough. <laughs> <laughs> I just did. <laughs> did you know that there is a protein in the Gila monster saliva that is used to make a medication for type 2 diabetes? Yeah, I read that. That was really cool. Yeah. Tag. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so the Gila monster lives in Arizona. And Mexico, as well as, you know, a few other states. It's also found in the extreme southwest corner, I mean, southeast corner of California. Yeah, like, it might as well, let's just not call it, say it's in California. It's so, <laughs> like a two foot over the line or something. Uh, Someone kicked one across the line and said, I found one in California. <laughs> <laughs> Basically. Uh, they're also in the southwest corners of Utah and New Mexico, so it's a relatively small range. Yeah. So it gets its name from the Gila River, which is where it was discovered. Yeah, and uh, the cool thing about this is they're desert dwellers, and they choose to live near washes or er er arroyos. Arroyos? Arroyos. Arroyos. 
And uh, what's an arroyo? <clears throat> an arroyo is a steep-sided gully formed by fast-flowing water that uh, in a semi-arid area. And funnily enough, these areas are primarily found uh, in the southwest of the U.S. Yeah, so from what it seems like, they like the semi semi sem, sem, ugh, can't talk either. They like the semi arid rocky regions in like scrubs or grasslands. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so being where considering where they live, that also probably means they enjoy some rocky foothills like the leopard geckos do in um <laughs> Yeah. Where are leopard geckos from? Yeah. Where are leopard geckos from? Africa? Because bearded dragons are the same, but they're in Australia. And I know leopard geckos and bearded dragons are on the same continent. Yeah, Gila's avoid... I'm just going to skip over you not knowing where th things are. Okay. <laughs> Gila's avoid flat, open areas and agricultural areas, just on principle. So they are a bit unique for the fact that they can live above... 5,000 feet above sea level. That's not that common, especially for a desert dweller uh, lizard. Huh. <clears throat> Their diet consists mostly of bird eggs, uh, but also small mammals such... <laughs> that doesn't make sense at all. <laughs> small mammals such as lizards, frogs, and insects. Yeah, I, miss, I must have mistyped that. Uh, but also small mammals, lizards, frogs, and insects. They're also known to eat carrion, which is dead and decaying things. So with each meal, they'll eat about one-third of their body weight. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> no, that's a lot of food. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> if you've never watched our videos, we're fairly big boys. <laughs> yeah, especially me. <laughs> so, I use the phrase as per usual. All the time. A lot in this episode, though. <laughs> so, like normal. As per usual. Us humans are at it again. We actually haven't done this one nearly as... My dad made fun of me for this. <laughs> Said it's a Gen Z thing, but it's not. Mm -hmm. We haven't done this one as dirty as we have other critters we've talked about. Done did them dirty. Like the uh, Indiana bat, which we did last week. Poor bats. Yeah. But uh, with the Gila Monster, we just kind of moved in. With the what? Oh, dang. <laughs> <I> gotcha. <laughs> with the Gila Monster. It's spelled Gila, but it's Gila. H-E-E-L-A. <laughs> yeah, see, I thought I was going to be the one that mispronounced it. I knew I was going to. <laughs> with the Gila Monster, we just kind of moved in and let our domesticated pets kill them off. And uh, we also began collecting them illegally and selling them <clears throat> in the pet trade. Um, they were declared endangered in 1952 and were the first venomous animal in North America to be declared as such. And the first venomous animal to ever be given legal protection. Yeah, so not only are we taking them from their homes, uh, we're also taking their homes for agriculture, canals, and roads. We're just cutting right through with whatever we want to do. And like Nathaniel said, our pets, our pets, our <laughs> pets are killing them, and the illegal collection for the pet trade is just wiping them out in the wild. Uh, there have been some efforts to relocate these critters, but a Gila will return to its home within two months. It takes a lot of effort. And it wastes a lot of energy that it doesn't really have to spend. But they'll come back. And even even relocating them further away so they can't make that trek back, they have uh, survival issues. Mainly because the population there doesn't really want to welcome them. But it's also like really unfamiliar, so they don't know where to find food and water or whatever they need. Or shelter. Yeah. So, you know, relocating is, is not the greatest thing. Yeah. It seems like a good idea. Like other animals, we can relocate pretty easy. Yeah. Like, oh, you live here. Let's move you 10 feet over. Okay, you're fine. 
bug turtles. <laughs> <laughs> it's a whole new world. But wow. but Gila's are more like, no, I like that rock. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're pretty. They're not. Well, I mean, they are territorial, <clears throat> but it's less. Mm, this is mine, and more of no. I like that place. Leave me alone. <laughs> I'm going back. <laughs> this rock smells funny. I ain't staying in the nursing home. <laughs> dang it. <laughs> okay. So talking about how they're doing now. Uh huh. Do you want the good news or the bad news first? Um. Let's go with bad news first. The bad news is they're still endangered. Yeah. But the uh-huh. good news is they're legally protected in every state that they inhabit. Four. E- <laughs> even California. <laughs> it's there. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, despite uh, everything going on, though, with the legal protections from the state, and there are still several organizations mm. that are helping with the Gila monster population to help them grow and stabilize. So that means with everything, we're doing better. Although that could be because there's a protein found in their saliva used in type 2 diabetes medication, but... Oh, so they're important to us suddenly. Yeah. So <clears throat> we, as human, are still trying to take over their territory, though. Is it trying or are we doing it? Well, the desert does fight back some. That's true. <laughs> So we're, I'll say trying. And, uh, uh, you know, the the need for them in the pet trade is prompting more people to collect them illegally. So that's not really slowing down either. So there's that. So whether you like it or not, you know, people are still taking them out of their natural environment for people to buy, even though there's legitimate breeders that you can get them from. Yeah, and not to mention the fact that they're really hard to take care of. Like, I always talk about how how if you're going to start being a reptile or an amphibian owner, start with a desert critter. Not the Gila monster. Yeah, not the Gila monster. Not even all desert critters. I know the desert is the easiest biome to maintain yeah but i mean even like leopard geckos are kind of hard to take care of yeah i just always say that because we've got like um the Euromastix, the bearded dragon uh we can talk about that on a different podcast yeah we'll get to that one we'll get there (laughs) yeah wait what is that what's what I, I, i think i hear the patter of tiny turtle feet you know what that means Buddy! <laughs> Happy Cinco de Mayo, buddy. Huh? It's, it's uh, the 5th of May. It's a, you know what? Never mind. What do you got for us? Well, um, you sound rough. <clears throat> Thanks, buddy. <laughs> so, uh, you're talking about one of my good friends, the Gila Monster. So I thought... Wait, you're friends with the Gila Monster? Well, kind of. Do you know any Gila monsters, buddy? No, but I know some fun facts. Are there really fun facts? Uh, maybe. (laughs) (laughs) All right, let's hear them. So, uh, oh man, you all already talked about the, uh, the the most of what I was going (laughs) to (laughs) I'm sorry, buddy. Um, Maybe you should, you know. Find some better facts. Just a turtle. But anyway, (laughs) did you know the Gila monster and its close cousin, the beaded lizard, which I think is what you were talking about with Nathaniel earlier. Are you spying on us? I live right there. True. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Um, which is called... uh, I, I can't say that. No, then you'll come back and say it later. <laughs> but anyway, the Gila monster and its cousin are the only two venomous lizards in the world. Sure about that, buddy. Yeah. What about the Komodo dragon? It has venom. No. Yeah. 
No. It's venom. No. Are you sure? Yeah. You're just a turtle. That's true. But you know who's not a, just a turtle? Who? The San Diego Zoo. <laughs> That's true. They're not a turtle. That's a good point. And, uh, well, this one's not that interesting, but I guess I'll say it. Uh, did you know that when the Gila monster can't kill its prey fast enough, it'll flip over while it's still biting it to help the po- venom get into the wound faster? Well, that is interesting, buddy. Yeah. What else you got? Yeah, I'm done. You suck. <laughs> uh, uh, well, <laughs> that was informative. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> I don't think he liked today. <laughs> he, uh, he, he yanked me out of my chair. <laughs> I think he was excited, and then we already talked about everything. Yeah, maybe. Uh, the uh, He left his notes here for me. The lizard he was trying to talk about, the beaded lizard, is, Helioder- is Heloderma horridium. Or horridum. Yeah, her rhythm. <laughs> Is it Helio? Helo. Heloderma <laughs> her rhythm. Got him again. <laughs> but uh <clears throat> that one fact that you were questioning Buddy on from the looks of it came straight from the San Diego Zoo website. Which means we've got some digging to do about the Komodo dragon. Yeah. I was pretty sure it was a venom, like uh, much like the. So, from what I understand, is they used to think it was a venom, but what it actually is is their saliva has a bacteria in well, it. Well, I know it has a bacteria; it causes an infection. But I th- also thought it was uh, a venom, like the like the Gila monster. Apparently not. Huh. Well, I guess the San Diego Zoo would know better than me. For now. <laughs> For now. For now. <laughs> a lot of effort from you. <laughs> yeah, it was a ton of effort. <sighs> well, it's always fun when he shows up. Is it? <laughs> I don't know. I'm never here. Yeah. Weird. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Get out of here, buddy. <laughs> don't kick Buddy. I didn't kick Buddy. I shut the door in his face. They don't know. They can't see where the door is. The door's that way. Yeah. I just reached on over. No, it's further than that. Shh. <laughs> anyway. You kicked Buddy. I did not. Oh, wait till you see the video. You kicked Buddy. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, he was actually on topic today, which was pretty <clears throat> cool. Um, But I think as humans, we can always be... Do- wait, wait a second. I just need to point something out for... The listeners. Oh, gosh. You've also said anywho a lot in the notes. (laughs) Anywho. (laughs) I think as humans, we can always be doing better. Anywho, as per usual. Listen, I... (laughs) <laughs> Don't get me started. I have a long day. If I were, I'm already <laughs> tired, and we have more recording to do. Yeah, well. <laughs> Anywho, dang it. <laughs> as per usual, <laughs> I think as humans we can always be doing better when it comes to conservation. But in this instance, I think we're doing all right. I mean, we're making the moves in the right direction. The only notes I would have is that maybe we don't let our cats and dogs just roam around. As Especially if you live in an area with venomous critters, because there's not a guarantee that your cat or dog is going to win that fight. So you're you're th- you're putting more at risk than just the Gila monster's life there. I think against the Gila monster, cat or dog is always going to win. Cause they're not very what's the word active. <laughs> That's true, <laughs> they're but a pretty lazy critter, with the exception of like larger dogs. A, he- a Gila monster bite would be pretty deadly. I mean, yes, it would be 
deadly, but it doesn't have, have to live to, to win. They have to put effort into it, though, and uh, really, healers ima- don't. I would imagine being attacked is enough of a reason to put in effort. Yeah, well, you shouldn't let your animals roam free anyway. Yeah, cats are in and of themselves an invasive species at this point, which I may talk about on one of our socials. Yes. I'll stop there. Okay. <laughs> So, uh, <clears throat> tag again. <laughs> okay, so this is may sound like I'm not talking about how can we fix this, but just give me a second. So, just a little background. All four of the North American deserts are located in Arizona. What? All four. <laughs> I can't help it. I am who I am. But thankfully, Arizona has really taken this responsibility to heart. They've launched several initiatives to protect the desert and scrublands and grasslands uh, where the Gila lives and beyond that, really. <clears throat> so several states within their range have passed laws protecting them. For instance, uh, in Utah, it's illegal to even handle a Gila monster without a permit. And our good friends in Arizona have banned collecting them, uh, killing them, which this makes sense. Let's, anyway. <laughs> and also selling them. You cannot sell a Gila within the borders of Arizona. Interesting. Yeah. So, there. I mean, there, we are kind of fixing it as humans, not... Me and you. Yeah. Yet. Yet. (laughs) Hey, why don't you sum it up, Buttercup? All right. Since you're too sick to go on all your little tangents this episode. Yeah, let's keep it short and sweet. So, I think it's safe to say that our theory that animals, like, our theory is in mine and yours, not our theory. Not not as humans. Yeah. Not the royal we. (laughs) That would be the royal R. Because I said our theory. Anyway, uh, our theory that animals have to be useful for humans to want to protect them, for the most part, it's true. Yeah. But as the Gila monster shows, all we have to do is find out how they're useful. And that's something... Okay. What? Yeah, no, yeah, I, I, I agree. I know where you're going with this. Okay. That's something we should focus on. Like, yeah. how are these animals useful? Yeah. Like, maybe we can even revisit the Black Side Days. How is it useful to humans? Right, yeah. And, like, uh, I was going to go in the direction of, like, you know, like, with bats. Yeah. I mean, it's not super, like, it's not useful to me and you particularly, but they're poops used in makeup products. And so that's enough of a reason for some people to care. Yeah. It's also, I mean, it it's very... Um, nitrogen rich, so it's very good for um gardens. Yeah, which bats will go to if because they have lots of bugs to eat there. True. But uh, yeah, every animal we cover from this point on, no matter how insignificant they may seem, we are going to find a reason why they're important. Vampires. Well. I don't know. That's what it says right there. I know. Why did you put vampires there? <laughs> I didn't. You did. I didn't write anything there. <laughs> but when I saw it earlier this week, I knew I was going to say it. Early. I wrote this yesterday. <laughs> that's earlier, isn't it? <laughs> I guess. <laughs> Anywho. I, uh. What did you do to the music? Well, thank you for joining us today. The Gila is not so much of a monster after all. (laughs) I thought perhaps we put this guy on the wrong podcast, you know? But, yeah. You, You know, 
the other one we do about cryptids and mythical creatures that could be real. The one we're discussing the goat sucker on this week. Join us next week as we go in depth about matriarch societies in the animal kingdom. For a break from all the conservation talk, join us on our other podcast <clears throat> out tomorrow on the goat sucker southern vampire mythical and legendary chupacabra. In the meantime, follow us on all of our social medias at Animals of Appalachia. And of course, like and subscribe. The video on this episode will be on YouTube if you want to watch us talk at Animals of Appalachia. Leave us a review and rate us to help others find us. See you next week. Hopefully I'll sound better. Yeah, but I'll be sick. (laughs) 